أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فما أوتيتم من شيء فمتاع الحياة الدنيا وما عند الله خير وأبقى للذين آمنوا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون والذين يجتنبون كبائر الإثم والفواحش وإذا ما غضبوهم يغفرون رب شح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم قرآن ويكلي This is now the 25th juz. Alhamdulillah, we are in Surah Al-Shura, Surah number 42. And I'm sharing with you ayah number, some things about ayah number 32, or 36 rather. Now, Allah says, whatever you've been given is utilities of worldly life, temporary things to enjoy and use. فَمَتَعَوَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَمَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْنُ وَأَبْقَى And whatever Allah has is better and last longer. وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And these are the people that put their trust in Allah. They constantly trust what Allah has is better and last longer. You have a ride, Allah has a better ride and it'll last longer. You have a house, Allah has a better house and it'll last longer. You have a spouse, Allah has a better spouse and that relationship will last longer. You have children, Allah will give you better children. In other words, they will come back to you in Jannah. They'll be better and they'll last longer. They're not gonna lose. Like I feel that. That's one of my favorite parts of this ayah. Because I want my children back. Because I tell my oldest daughter, I miss you. She's like, why do you miss me? Abba, I'm here. I miss you when you were one. I miss that age. You had these little goopy dooby cheeks. Where'd they go? You got skinny and tall. And now you talk back too. You know? You missed, you look, you, I, I see the pictures of my children from the earlier years and I'm like, wow. They were mine? They were so cute. They were so adorable. Because what Allah will give you in Jannah will be there forever. You'll get to enjoy it forever. It won't change. Change is painful. You know, we look back. I mean, I look back and like, you know, where did the last 10 years go? I don't even know. SubhanAllah. So quickly life passes us by. Whatever Allah will give us, it'll be better. It's going to last longer. وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And they completely trust that Allah, what Allah will give them in the Akhirah is better. Even if you have a good life here. Even if you have a good life. Not just if you have a bad life. Even if you have a good life, what Allah will give you is better and lasts longer. That is the faith with which you have to live. Now, Allah describes these people that have trust in Allah and the first two things that they are able to accomplish in life, that's the only thing I want to highlight before you guys. These are people that are able to avoid major sins. And they're able to avoid shamelessness. All forms of shamelessness. So Allah mentions major, sh major sins and shamelessness. You know, there are small sins and there are big sins. There are sins like, you know, uh, rushing through the prayer, not doing the best wudu. There are sins like not lowering your eyes fast enough. There are sins like maybe making fun of someone, not realizing you crossed the line. That's a sin. It's not, it's not good. You know, there are sins like reciting the Quran but not reciting it properly. Small things. There are sins that you can not even realize you're doing. But then, there are major sins. The consumption of haram, like you're drinking a beer. You know, the, 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 the zina of the eyes. It's pretty major. Actual zina. Killing somebody. Consuming riba. Earning riba. You know, endorsing it. Saying something that Allah has made haram, that it's no big deal, it's okay, it's halal. Allah will understand. Things like that. These are major sins. Allah says... You want to be people of the afterlife? Number one thing you give me is don't do major sins. Kaba'ir al Stay away from the big stuff. You can refine yourself and work on the smaller things over time and become better and better and better as a Muslim. But the first order of priority is the major, major sins. If you're dating a girl, you're in major sin. If you're dating a guy, you're in major sin. You need to stop before you worry about anything else in Islam. If you're addicted to pornography, you're in, in a deep. This is a, bad, this is a deep problem. It's a deep, deep spiritual problem. You need to get away from it because the zina of the eyes will lead to other kinds of zina. You need to stop. That is the first thing you have to address. If you're addicted to alcohol, if you're taking drugs, if you're smoking weed, if you're, if you're doing pot, or worse, 
you know. If you're doing this stuff, you need to stop. If you're stealing money, if you're stealing money from your parents, if you're stealing money from your job, you need to stop. If you're investing in what you know are haram industries, and you're making money in a way that you know is not you know, permissible by, by our deen, you know. And if you're even, if you, even if you're like, oh, I'm in an innocent business, I'm in real estate. Okay, that's innocent enough, but I rent out my warehouse to a club. <laughs> okay, you're not clubbing, you're just renting it out to them, you are perpetuating evil. You may not be the facet, you may not be the corrupt one, but you are the cause of corruption. Without you renting it out, it wouldn't exist. So you're complicit. You're complicit in that. Stop doing the major stuff first. And then the second line of defense, personally, well, fawahish, all forms of shamelessness, you need to stop. And I particularly highlighted shamelessness, as I was talking to you, dating, pornography, this sort of thing. Why? Because Allah took major sins, and immediately after highlighted in particular, shamelessness and all forms of it. Any act of it, any manifestation of it, anything that takes you clo close to it, avoid it altogether. And when they get angry, then they are able to forgive. These are the things that we need to prioritize. And these are the goals you need to set for yourself. How will you surround yourself with people that will help you avoid major sins? That will give you fresh, fresh company, good company, that keeps you on the right track, and when you're slipping, they're able to stop you and pull you right back in. I pray all the best for you, and I pray that inshallah your life becomes better and better and better as a Muslim, and that you and I are able to stand in front of Allah successful on Judgment Day, and be able to congratulate each other because we helped each other make it. Barakallahu li wa lakum, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.